So looking at page eight of your notebook, I want you to go ahead and copy down what you see at the top of the screen. Pause the video and copy it into your notes. Okay, so after you've copied this, you'll see that the quotient is the answer that you get into a division problem. The divisor is the number on the outside, and that is the number that you are dividing into the dividend. Now you're going to type in, or excuse me, you're going to write some guided notes. And we're just going to go through the steps of how to divide with decimals. And then we're going to go through four examples. Pause your video and copy step one. So in the divisor, move the decimal to the end to make it a whole number. You should have copied this. In the divisor, move the decimal to the end. If it doesn't have one, just smile and grin. Okay. Step two, move same number of decimal places in the dividend if you will pause and copy step two. So step two means however many places you move the de decimal in the divisor, you're going to do the same thing in the dividend. If you moved the decimal in the divisor two places to the right, then you're going to do the same thing in the dividend. Again, if it doesn't have a, a decimal in the divisor, you don't move anything. Now that you have moved the decimals, you will want to rewrite the problem because you now have a whole number that you are dividing into another number. So step three, pause the video and copy step three, which is to rewrite the problem. After you have rewritten the problem, then you'll want to set up your division problem and bring the decimal up into the answer. What you do to divisor must do to dividend. Bring that decimal straight up if you want to win. Pause your video and copy step four. Finally, do the division like a player, then you will know decimal operations wherever you may go. So the last step is we're going to divide. Now this is going to be different than dividing with whole numbers. We're dividing with decimals. So there will be some problems when we get a remainder that we're going to continue adding zeros and bringing those zeros down. And we will continue dividing until we see a pattern of numbers that repeat in our answer or until we have no remainder. Pause and copy step five. Now that you have all of your notes copied, we're going to look at a few examples. On your paper, you should see examples one and two, and three and four. But let's look at problems one and two. Notice that eight, which is our divisor, and four, which is the divisor for number two, does not have a decimal. So there's no decimals to move. All we need to do here is to set up our division problem. So if you will pause the video and copy your division problem that you see on the board. So this is 64 hundredths divided by eight. We didn't have to move any decimals, so we're gonna start with step four, which tells me to bring that decimal straight up if you wanna win. Now, after we bring the decimal up, we're gonna begin dividing. So we're, we're following step five. Like we learned last week, you'll say, will eight go into zero? No, it will not because it is bigger. Okay, now last week we put an X, but you could also replace that with a zero. It looks a little bit better to have a zero in front of a decimal than an X. Let's continue on. Then we will divide eight into six and it will not go, but there has to be a number above the six, so that number would be a zero. Excuse my handwriting, I am writing with a mouse at home I don't have my board, my smart board to write on, so it's gonna be a little bit messy, but just do the best you can and hopefully your paper will be very neat. Okay, we've divided, so now we're gonna multiply zero times eight is zero. Now we are ready to subtract and we get six. So if you will pause the video and make sure you have done this problem up to this point. Now that we have subtracted, six is less than eight, so that checks out fine. So we are ready to bring, remember, does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers? So we're bringing down, which makes that a 64. Now we're dividing eight into 64, 
and it will go eight times. Eight times eight is 64, and now we're ready to subtract. So pause your video and make sure that you have finished example number one. The answer is eight hundredths. Okay, let's move on to example two, which is a lot like the first one. Four is the divisor and it doesn't have a decimal, so we just leave it alone as it is, and I want you to pause the video and copy down the division problem. Three and three tenths divided by four. We didn't move any decimals, so now we're ready to bring that decimal straight up and start dividing. Eight will not go into three, so instead of an X, I'm gonna put a zero. It just looks better when you, have, when you see a decimal. However, four will go into 32. Four goes into 32, excuse me, 33, eight times. Pause your video and catch up with this problem. Eight times four is 32. And now we are ready to subtract and we get one. Now last week when we were dividing with whole numbers, we would stop right here, but if you were to solve this problem in a calculator, it would not say eight tenths remainder one. It's gonna give you a number behind the decimal. So that's where this part comes in of our notes. Behind this three, we can add as many zeros as we need and bring them down, and that's gonna let us continue dividing. It doesn't change the fact that this is three and three tenths. It just gives us more places to divide. So we're gonna bring that zero down and now we're dividing four into 10. Pause your video and catch up with this problem. Four goes into 10 two times. Two times four is eight. That's an eight there. And when we subtract, we get two. Pause your video and catch up. Now, we still don't notice a pattern with these numbers. In other words, it doesn't say decimal eight, two, eight, two, eight, two yet or it doesn't say decimal 82222, two, 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 and we still have a remainder. So we have to keep dividing by adding these zeros on the end. So we're gonna add a zero, bring it down, and that gives us another place to divide. We're dividing four into 20, and it will go five times, that's a five, and five times four is 20 with a remainder of zero. Pause your video and catch up with example two. Okay, so we have two examples to go, and you'll notice both of these divisors do have decimals in the end. Up here, we didn't have to move any decimals, but down here with both of these, we're gonna, in the divisor, move the decimal to the end. So as I do this on my paper, you're gonna do it on yours. Take your pencil, put it on the decimal, and we're gonna move it one, two, and that brought that number or that decimal to the end. So this is now a whole number of 83. Go ahead and rewrite 83. Now, because we moved this decimal two places, we've got to do the same thing in the dividend. What you do to divisor, you must do to dividend. So take your pencil and let's move this decimal one, two places, which means it ends up between the one and the five. So we're gonna rewrite this number as 41 and five tenths. So our problem is now 41 and five tenths divided by the whole number of 83. Make sure you have rewritten the problem. We move this decimal two places to the right to get it to the end, so we have to move this decimal two places to the right. Okay? Now copy your division problem. This is the way your division problem should look now. 41 and 5 tenths divided by the whole number of 83. Bring that decimal straight up if you want to win. Do the division like a player. So let's start dividing. 83 will not go into four. It will not go into 41. So you gotta have zeros there. It's too big. It's bigger than 41. However, 
it will go into 415. Now that's a big number. So this would be when you take 83, go out to the side and just see what 83 times four is. And then if that's not the right answer or close enough, you could adjust it from there. But I've already solved this, so I know that 83 times five is 415. That's a four, not a nine. And when we subtract, we get zero. This is a four. So pause your video and complete this example. The answer is five tenths. Okay, in our last example, look at your divisor, take your pencil and move that decimal to the end. Pause your video and move that decimal to the end. Okay, you should have moved this decimal to the end, which makes that a whole number of 26. Now, because you moved this decimal two places to the right, you're going to do the same thing with this one. Pause your video and do that now. Two places to the right. One, two. Which makes this number, excuse my handwriting, 137 and 28 hundredths. That's an eight. Divided by the whole number of 26. 137 and 28 hundredths divided by 26. Which means our division problem looks like what you see now. So if you will pause the video and write your division problem. Bring that decimal straight up and then we're gonna start dividing. 26 will not go into one, it will not go into 13, but it will go into 137. It will go five times. Five times 26 is 130. Pause your video and get caught up with this problem. That's a 130. When we subtract, we get seven. And I'm going to bring down this two. Now I want you to pause your video and divide 26 into 72. Do that right now. Okay, you should have said that 26 goes into 72 two times, which is 52. This is a five and a two. And when we subtract, we get 20. And we're gonna keep dividing until we see a pattern in our answer or until we have no remainder. So this time we're bringing down this eight. Excuse my curvy lines, yours should be straight. That's an eight. Now I want you to pause the video and I want you to divide 26 into 208. Okay, hopefully you said that 26 goes into 208 eight times. It should be an eight, eight times. Eight times 26 is 208. And when, we, when you subtract, that's an eight, you get zero. So the answer to number four is five and 28 hundredths. Now, again, make sure your paper looks a lot neater than mine. You should have all four examples completed on your notebook page, and you should have all of the notes at the top filled in. Make sure that your notebook page is complete. Now what I want you to do is fold this handout and tape it onto page eight of your notebook. Make sure that you tape it onto page eight of your notebook. 